Although, sometimes Christmas gets so chaotic. Sometimes you really don't know what you're doing, whether you're going to the in-laws over here, or driving over here, or whether you're doing a Christmas Eve, or whether you're doing lunch at Christmas. Sometimes we get so busy doing Christmas. And sometimes even Christians can get more wrapped up in the presence under the tree than the birthday of a Savior. So as we're talking today about the purpose and the reason uh, for Christmas, we as Christians have to realize there's only one purpose for Christmas. We can't get caught up in the chaos and the hustle and the busyness and forget about Jesus. See, when Joseph had that dream and that angel said this in Matthew ch chapter 1 verse 21, she will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus for it is he who will save his people from their sins. The entire Bible is wrapped up in that one verse. Jesus, God, came to this earth to be man, to pay for your sins and mine. If we, as a church, as a country, if we ever leave out the Jesus of the nursery, we will never have the Jesus of on the cross. You ask then, why, why the, the nativity scene caused so much anger in public squares? Why is Jesus taken off the signs? Why? why? Why can't we have Christmas without the manger? Why can't we have life without the manger? Why does Jesus have to be in the center of this thing called Christmas. And we as Christians, we would say, it's all about Jesus. We have to have our faith in Jesus. We understand about Jesus. But when somebody does not know Jesus, they do not want to put their faith in something they do not believe in. They would rather ignore it, put it under the carpet, Act like it doesn't take place. They'll celebrate Christmas. Oh, it is the reason for the season. Oh, yeah, well, let's celebrate. Let's put the Christmas lights on and the trees up and wrap our presents and have family time. And that is what Christmas has been relegated to for many of our churches and for many of Christians. And, of course, for most of the world. But unless we can put Jesus where he needs to be in the midst of Christmas, that last verse, he will save his people from their sins. The power of the Christmas, power of that morning, power of his resurrection, the power of his birth, being born of a virgin, to be born to die for you. And I. Christmas has been complex and chaos, even confusing. Christmas should be simple, not complex. Christmas, if we can understand, Christmas should be stripped down from its trappings to the ultimate gift of Jesus. When we have Christmas and we do not mention Jesus, we've lost the point of Christmas. When we spend so much more time on our homes, talking about Christmas, but we don't celebrate Christmas, then we've lost the point. The only thing, the only element that Christmas seasonal celebration should have, it should be about Jesus. There's real strength in Jesus. There's no real peace or comfort found in the confidence of presents or Santa Claus or reindeer or even a tree. There's no lasting value of any earthly gift or any sentiment that you could express. No package, no party can really sustain the flickering life that we have. No bright lights can lift up the downcast soul of a higher need of a spiritual life. There's no power in Santa Claus and there's no power in the tree. And when they're desperate, and people around Christmas time can be very desperate, giving them a gift will put a smile on their face for a short period of time.
But that gift is going to be unwrapped. And that gift will be put in the closet or on a shelf. But that hope, the desperate need of something that will change their life will still be there. The desperate life, only he can feel the heart, the one that has doubt. Only he can heal, feel the heart of a lost soul of sadness because of calamity. Only he can feel the heart and peace when there's times of fear. We talk about the new year. Talk about what we want to do and dream for 2017. And there's people that can't even get past December 25th. There's people that wonder what in the world are they even going to do tomorrow. The hope and the dreams and their goals have been vanquished. It's empty. And Jesus came to empty himself for you and I. To empty his life. To shed his blood. Emptied his life. God emptied his presence of heaven into a little baby for you and I. We are full of ourselves. And Jesus emptied himself. And so often at Christmas, we start filling ourselves up for what we want and what we desire and our goals and our wishes and I get what I want and I'm a happy camper. And we have to remember Jesus came to this world empty, vulnerable, a child for you and for me. Rachel, when she read, she read four names in five verses of Jesus. In verse 21, he's called Jesus. In verse 23, he's called Emmanuel. In verse 2 of chapter 2, he's called King. In verse 4, he is called the Christ. All of those titles for a baby? The wise men saw the star from the east and came and traveled. And when they saw the star and it settled upon the home in which Jesus lived, they came and worshipped him. Why this baby? Why this baby at this time? Why did people come to worship this baby? There were all kinds of babies. Why did Herod want this baby to die? Why is this child so important? Verse 21. And she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. The angel told Joseph, you're going to call the baby Jesus. And because he, it is he who will save his people from their sins. See, that last word of that verse changes everything. Because if you do not believe that you sin, you do not need a savior. And if you do not need a Savior, Jesus doesn't make any difference within your life. But when there's a point in your life where you bowed your face before God and said, I am a sinner, I need Jesus, Jesus matters. The baby doesn't stay a baby. The baby dies on the cross. Jesus matters. And the world wanted to separate humanity from deity, and they wanted to crucify Jesus. In verse 25, when he was born... It says that Joseph called his name Jesus in obedience to the demand that was called upon him. The same Jesus is known in the New Testament as mentioned 700 times. It is the form of the Hebrew word Joshua. It means Yahweh or God will save. As a baby, God will save he didn't save you because he was born. He came to be born to die to save you. Luke 2.11 2, says he would be born a savior. Mark 10.45 says the son of man has come to save. Luke 19.10, he has come to save. He shall save the people from their sins. That is a glorious reality. Even the Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses. See, believing in Jesus is one thing. I believe Jesus 
was alive. I believe Jesus was born. I believe Jesus grew up 33 years. And you could even believe that Jesus was a prophet. But believing in Jesus as a man and believing that Jesus was born doesn't change the fact that you need Jesus' shed blood to redeem you of your sins. When Jesus died on the cross and you accept the salvation that Jesus Christ performed for you, that is what that salvation is. The blood that he shed for the covering of your sins. The consequences of your sin, namely, it is eternal damnation. So Jesus as a baby did not come to be cute. Jesus as a baby came to be crucified. To save you for eternity. But not only from eternity. We're all going to live one place or another for eternity. Those that reject Jesus' birth and reject Jesus' death will spend an eternity separated from Jesus. But when you separate Jesus and you accept him into your heart and you believe that he died on the cross and shed his blood to cover your sins, you have eternity with Jesus. Salvation is by definition rescuing you from the consequences of sin. Because sin has consequences. Every sin has consequences. We either go to heaven or hell because of the consequence of that sin. When we break that sin consequence and we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, the blood that he shed for us caused a different consequence to that sin. Jesus' blood paid the price for that consequence of sin. But if we do not know Jesus, then that consequence of sin is still on our life. And that consequence of that sin is eternal damnation away from God. In Acts chapter 13, verses 38 through 39, the scripture says, Through him, that is Jesus, forgiveness of sin is proclaimed to you and through him, whoever believes is freed from all things. All things. The Israel's greatest day of atonement. The priest would bring two goats up in front of the entire congregation. Two goats. And the priest, this is gross, but the priest would slit one of the goat's throats. And that priest would put the blood of that goat upon the altar. And that goat would have been sacrificed for the sins of everybody in that room for that year. And he would pray over them and lay hands on that goat. And then he would take the live goat and he would proclaim the sins that that old goat just died for. And he'd lay his hands on the new goat which represented forgiveness. And he'd take that goat and all the sins that that goat died for and the shed blood for, put it upon this goat. And then the priest would take this goat out of the city gates and walk it out to be released to never come back. And in Leviticus chapter 16, God put this down in the Old Testament to picture what Jesus Christ is going to do for us. He is going to come in. He is going to be sacrificed. His blood is going to be shed. And then the forgiveness of sin for all mankind will be forever. It's called, as far as the east is from the west, buried in the deepest sea. Leviticus chapter 16 talks about that symbolic act of what Jesus Christ was going to do for us. In fact, the word to forgive means to send away or to dismiss. It is even used in legal terms as talking about a debt being pardoned. That means every sin that you've ever committed would be pardoned because of Jesus' act that he performed. We look at that in Leviticus chapter 16 of two goats, one being sacrificed and one being released. One being put to death because of the sins of a country. And one being free. And his sins be laid upon him. And when his sins are freed. When Jesus died on that cross. He was buried. rose again. And entered into heaven. He took your sin. And he buried it on the cross. And in the blood of Jesus Christ. Why does this little baby make a difference? Because if we get rid of the baby in Christmas we lose the Jesus that died for us. Why did Herod want to kill all 
the kids three years and younger because he wanted to crucify Jesus. He didn't want a king. He didn't mind little kids that he didn't want to lose his power. In Psalm chapter 103 verse 12 says, As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. Yes, the question, how far is the east is from the west? The answer is an old term. It's called infinity. To infinity and beyond. Isaiah 44, 22 says, I have wiped out your transgressions like a thick cloud and your sins like a heavy mist. I can no longer see your sins any more than you can see a mountain in the dense fog. It's blotted out. And then Micah, the great prophet in chapter 7 says, Who is a pardoning God like you? Who passes by our transgressions and who buries them in the depths of the sea. See, what Jesus did on that Christmas morning that sometimes we try to take Jesus out of, there's no way that we can have peace in the midst of the storm. There's no way that we can have calmness in our fears. When we are distressed, we can enjoy family and we can enjoy the presence. But when it comes down to it, the deepest need of every individual is to be able to humble ourselves and worship like the wise men at the feet of Jesus. That's why Christmas Eve and Christmas morning, I know that you have family things. And I know it's important that you enjoy your family around Christmas. But you know what's really more important than having a Christmas dinner? is having a birthday party. Having a birthday party for the one that was born. Now, why? It's because if he was never born, we would not have a relationship with God. But because God became man and dwelt among us and lived 33 years in a sinless life, he was betrayed. An innocent individual was betrayed hung on a cross, crucified, and died for you. Does it make any difference? Does the Jesus on Christmas morning make any difference? In 1 John chapter 2, verse 12, John says, I am writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. Your sins are forgiven just because who he is it is his purpose it is his glory and he wants to forgive your sins what a blessed reality that Jesus came into this world to forgive you doesn't mean that we won't commit sin because we do it doesn't mean that sin won't be harmful upon us because sin is harmful to us it doesn't mean that because you're a believer in Jesus Christ that your sin is not going to have consequences to you. Sin has consequences. You could look at families. You can look at health. You can look at the depravity of our country. You can know that sin has consequences. But here's the deal. The consequences of that sin is still under the blood of Jesus Christ. We live in a very deprived, depraved country. And we look at people, and people can do some horrendous things. But it doesn't change the fact that once you have given your life to Jesus Christ, you are saved. Doesn't mean that you'll never sin, because you will. It doesn't mean that you won't do anything wrong, because you will. It doesn't mean that your body will not fall apart, because it will. It doesn't mean that you can ask God to forgive you and to heal you and ask you never to grow old because you will grow old. What it means is when you're old, when your body falls apart, the consequences of that sin is still wrapped up in the forgiveness and the love of Jesus. And just like what we had here this week, and when you're old, and you close your eyes. And you take your last breath. We don't talk about the sin that you've committed. We don't talk about the life that you lived. 
the preacher will get up and say this. He or she knew Jesus. She or he was saved. They put their faith in Jesus. They were saved by Jesus. They're going to heaven not because of them being good. They're going to heaven because what Jesus did for them. Does Jesus make a difference? Changes everything. Jesus is the season. Jesus is our life. What does it mean? What does it mean? That means Jesus paid the ultimate penalty. Your sin and my sin. This little baby that people want to take out of the manger scene. They don't want the nativity scene to be seen out in public. They would like to ignore it. But as Christians, what I want to say to you, what I need to say to myself, Jesus is the reason we celebrate Christmas. We may have a tree. We may have presents. We may have a dinner. We may enjoy the fellowship. But if we as Christians forget the purpose of Christmas, we have buried our head in the sand and have been no different than a culture that wants to take him out of the manger scene. We, we need to stand up. We need to stand up and say, Jesus is my Savior. We can't not be embarrassed. We can't hide the fact that I can't go to heaven without him. I can't be forgiven without him. The Jesus that was born is the Jesus that died and is the Jesus that one day in my life I bowed my knees and I said, I can't do this any longer. And I said, Jesus, I need you to be my Lord and my Savior. And he forgave me of my sins instantaneously. Every sin that I have ever committed in the past, and listen to this, every sin that I will ever commit into the future was buried in the blood of Jesus Christ. I don't go to heaven because I'm good. I go to heaven because he is good. I go to heaven because he loved me so much. He died on the cross for me. Christ did that. Jesus. It's just Christmas. Do we really need to go to church on Christmas? Do we really need to sacrifice on Christmas? Do we really need to give Jesus the honor at Christmas? Can't we just open our presents? Can't we just have dinner? Can't we just forget about it? Or as a child of God, a blood saint of God, can't we say, I will not celebrate Christmas without Jesus being in the center because I have nothing if I do not have Jesus. Church, Jesus. Jesus is the reason that we celebrate Christmas. He is the reason we're going to heaven. He is the reason we are forgiven. There's no other name under heaven given by man other than Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. It is the sweetest name that we could ever utter. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus.